hey, Alfred Street, it's Silent Saturday. We have seen the cleansing of the temple, the cursing of the fig tree, the betrayal of Judas, the Last Supper, the crucifixion. And today we meditate on Silent Saturday. The scripture reads as this. It's from Luke 23, verses 56b. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. It's likely one of the briefest explanations of what the followers of Jesus had done in the time of his ministry, though its brevity doesn't undermine its profundity. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Here we're following the women. They have just prepared the spices and the ointment to anoint Jesus's body. But they rested on the Sabbath in accordance with the commandment. They've just followed Jesus down the road to Golgotha, a bloodied and bruised Jesus carrying his own cross a part of the way, being lifted up on that same cross after hearing Jesus cry, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. After hearing their Jesus cry, I thirst. After hearing their Jesus cry, Abba, why have thou forsaken me? After hearing their Jesus cry, I commit my spirit back to you and then give up the ghost. The women had seen all of this. They watched from a distance. And then they followed Joseph of Arimathea as he claimed Jesus' body. They watched as he wrapped him in the linen and they watched as he laid him in a borrowed tomb. They watched. And now they had something in their hands that they could do. They prepared the spices and they prepared the ointment to anoint Jesus' body. And if you're anything like me, if after a whole day of watching tragedy upon tragedy, after wanting to do something but not being able to, and you have spices and ointment in your hand, whatever those things are, you have a desire to put it to use. You have a desire to put it to work. You have a desire to operate an agency and power and to do something. But these women show us what God calls us to do even in the face of our tragedies. That after the tragedy of yesterday, the hard facts of yesterday, and before the uncertainty of tomorrow, that today God might just be calling us to rest. These women had the spices and the ointment in their hand. They knew exactly where Jesus was laid, and yet, they rested in accordance to the commandment. These women are showing us that after we've done all that we could do, right before we can put our hands to work again, God might be calling us to follow what he said. Whatever God's commandments have been in your life, whatever God's truth has been to you, whatever you've known before the tragedy has happened, that that thing is still true today. So on this silent Saturday, we're asking you to consider that God might be asking you to rest between the hard facts of yesterday and the uncertainty of tomorrow. Today, even with all that you have in your hands, God might be calling you to rest. I'd probably submit to you also that in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, that God intentionally built in this day of rest for that moment in history, for that moment when we would watch Jesus hang on a tree, that on the next day we would be forced to rest. And maybe for you, if you're anything like me, you might feel like you want to have a bit of sense of control when you have the things in your hands and you know what to do with it, and you know where to go to apply that strength and that work. That God might be calling us to rest so that we can see that when it's silent on earth, 
it's not quiet in heaven. God is doing an amazing work and God is waiting for you to trust on the word that he's given. Rest on it. Stand on it. After you've done everything you can do and when you want to do a little more, God might still be asking us to rest on his truth even when the facts are hard. Because you never know, you might be resting up for the strength to behold what God has for you tomorrow, what God has for all of us the next day. So on this silent Saturday, I implore you, rest, sit, stay in the silence, and expect that the best is yet to come.